So I created a sourdough starter or a sourdough culture about five years ago. Essentially all I did was mix some flour and some water, mixed it into a paste and left it on the, on the side in my kitchen for, for five days. And every time somebody learns how to make sourdough bread for me, I give them a little bit of that starter. And that goes to North Birmingham, to London, to Cumbria, to Norfolk. And then they pass it to their friends. It's incredible. One loaf can feed humanity. <laughs> My name's Tom Baker. I run Loaf, which is a social enterprise business in South Birmingham. So yeah, my sourdough is basically a goo which sits in my fridge. It's five years old. Every week I get it out. I get it out on a Wednesday night. I feed it with flour and with water. And I leave it out for, you know, eight hours. I then feed it again and then I feed it again. Even though I only keep a yogurt pot full, just 200 grams, by Thursday night I've got three kilograms of this stuff and I can start making some serious dough with this, this goo. I've been baking bread for about 10 years now. I started really when I was a teenager baking bread. My first few loaves were pretty disastrous, but my family fortunately were very tolerant of, of my new hobby. It was really about five years ago that I had, I describe it as a road to Damascus moment. It was a chilly day in Oxfordshire. I was studying for my master's course. I had a friend that was a top chef at a, a restaurant in Oxfordshire. He brought me this half loaf of bread in a paper bag from the restaurant kitchen. Uh, it was called sourdough. I'd never even heard of sourdough bread, and it let, let alone make it. I tasted this bread, and I just had never tasted anything like it. I couldn't, I couldn't remember a bread that could taste so good on its own. And, uh, you know, I realised that this was uh, something a bit special. This was bread that had been made for thousands of years and really the bread that I'd come to know in my childhood probably wasn't really bread at all. Ever since that moment, I, I kind of knew instantly that I had to learn how to make it my, myself. So I, I started developing a sourdough culture, you know, wild yeasts and bacteria that were fermenting in my fridge. Um, it was quite a bizarre concept and I had to keep this kind of pet alive. But, you know, pretty quickly it, it became part of the, the rhythm of my life and every week I would bake a couple of loaves of bread, you know, one for the bread bin, one for the freezer and it would nourish me and, and my, my wife for, for a week. Um, over the years this, this became more and more of an obsession. I, you know, I wanted to create the perfect loaf. Uh, I wanted to, to provide a, a better looking, a better tasting loaf. Um, you know, always slightly more pleasing than the last. Eventually in 2009, this became a total career change. Um, I gave up my job as a nutritionist in the NHS and I launched into teaching people how to make bread. Pretty soon after that, in 2010, I started baking bread pretty seriously every Friday from my back garden. I built an earth oven because... Why did I build an earth oven? Because <laughs> I was bored? <laughs> I baked my bread in a wood-fired earth oven. Um, I built the oven myself. It's kind of like making bread, there's only four ingredients. It's mud, sand, straw and water. Uh, it's pretty simple to make really, but you've got to know what you're doing. The walls of the earth oven are about 10 inches thick, they build up you know, an amazing amount of heat which they then give back to the oven chamber. 
and you can bake bread in there for a couple of hours. Cooking on the, the heat from a wood fire is one of the most elemental things you can do. It gives bread an amazing kind of smoky quality. elemental type of bread, sourdough bread that's been around for 2,000 years. To cook it using a method of firing wood which has been around for 6, 10, 12, 15,000 years, whatever it is. Those two things coming together are an amazing connection I think and can produce the best possible bread but also you know it's an amazing thing to, to do. It's important that we can provide wholesome bread to our community and can teach people in this country how to make bread themselves. This idea of nurturing, of sustaining a culture is so important to the philosophy of life, not only in our bread making, but in what we try and achieve as a business and, and as a, a member of our local community. So for two years now, we've run a cookery school and a community bakery for my, my kitchen here in South Birmingham. Pretty much every weekend, every Saturday, I have six people right here in my kitchen learning how to make good wholesome bread for themselves and for their families. It's such an amazing thing seeing people digging their hands into dough who maybe have never done it before. And it's almost like you can see the synapses reconnecting in their brain. They're connecting with something that has been done for thousands of years. They're mixing flour, water, salt and yeast together and they're creating dough. This fleshy substance which springs to life half an hour later, you know, in the bowl. It's just incredible to see the transformation in them and, and the transformation in, in the dough which will later become bread. It's about seeing, seeing growth, seeing ripening in society. Two thirds of the world have bread as a, a staple food and it's, it's such a powerful metaphor for 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 life, for um, for death, for you know, for birth and living, it's just such a, a powerful thing. <laughs>